Well, welcome to the last of these uh, thoughts for the, the day that are inspired by the wonderful music that, that seems to be such a central part of, of Christmas. Uh, last night was, was Twelfth Night, or well, if you count it differently, maybe tonight is Twelfth Night. And today is certainly the Feast of Epiphany, the, sort of the end of the Christmas season, as we move into the, the next season of the Christian year. And I thought maybe for this, this last one, I just uh, reflect on a bit that there is not, there are other music, there is other music uh, beyond Christmas carols that is somehow associated deeply with, with Christmas in, in our thinking. I'm not a great fan of uh, Last Christmas or A White Christmas, although I'm as much of a sucker for a catchy tune as, as anyone else. Uh, similarly, Jingle Bells and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Reindeer go bouncing around my mind, but don't really link in my mind to what Christmas is about. But there is one song that, that does, and that's the 12 days of Christmas. And so I've come out here, out in the garden. We started this series out, out in the garden in the snow, now we're out in the garden again. And it's snowing again, and I'm out. I couldn't find a pear tree, but the nearest thing I could find is our apple tree here. Uh, we seem to be uh, somewhat fresh out of partridges, but maybe this is just a reminder of that first, that first verse of the, uh, the, the 12 days of Christmas. The first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. And uh, there is a wonderful a uh, kind of rumour, I'm pretty sure it's not true, uh, but someone came up the, with the idea that the 12 uh, days of Christmas and the, the, the 12 different gifts, uh, the, 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 this song w was originally written uh, to help uh, Christians, I think Catholics specifically, uh, learn their faith, a kind of coded way of learning their faith uh, at a time when uh, uh, the Catholic Church was sadly being persecuted. Now, uh, people who've investigated this tradition say there's really no, no evidence for it. Uh, and in fact, if you look at the things that the 12 gifts are supposed to, it's supposed to signify, they're things that Catholics and Protestants have in common. So they're not things that divide us, they're things that, that unite us. So it's a nice idea, probably not true. But I did like, I did like the idea that the 12 numbers, one to, one to 12, 12 counting down to one, uh, each could remind us of something about, about our faith. Um, so that when we see uh, 12 or 7 or whatever it is of something, it can remind us of some, some truth about who God is and who we are in, in God. So here, here it goes. On the 12th day of Christmas, the true Lord gave to me 12 chosen apostles or, or 12 tribes of Israel. 12 signifies for us that the kind of complete nature of the people of God, the thing that we are invited into when we're adopted as God's family. 12 chosen apostles, 11 faithful waiting apostles, because after the resurrection, well after the ascension, there are only 11 Apostles left, 11 waiting to see what would, what would happen when the day of Pentecost came. They chose a the 12th one, but there were only 11. And 10, well, what do we do? We have 10, we have 10 commandments, 10, 10 words that summarize what it means to live with our holy and our, and our wonderful God. Love the Lord with all your, God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Have no other gods before me. Nine, nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, things that God puts in us when we put our trust in Him: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Three sets of three. Nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Eight, eight, eight beatitudes. Beatitudes, blessed, in. A, just at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed, eight times, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And there's seven more of those. Eight beatitudes, seven. Well, seven in this, this idea that, that, that was, was out there was, was seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. But to be honest, when you start counting gifts of the Holy Spirit, 
uh, the counting is a bit tricky and, and seven maybe isn't the right number. So maybe we're better to think of, of seven churches in Revelation, seven seals, seven trumpets that point to the return of Jesus. Six days of creation, and we were made on the sixth day. Five books in the Torah, uh, the, fa the, the foundation of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Four Gospels, the foundation of the New Testament. Three persons in the Trinity. Uh, two, well in the traditional version that's two testaments, the Old and New Testament. Maybe we should think that there's actually two ways to live. A choice we make. Do we let God be king? Or do we make ourselves king of our own lives? And one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. May you be found in him. May all these numbers point, remind you of who God is and who we are in him. And may God bless you and have a great uh, epiphany. And Terry will be back, all being well, with a, a thought for the day tomorrow. God bless.